Hey guys, so as I said in my last video, I was at the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland in Edinburgh last week, uh, which is why I broke my two videos a week schedule. For those watching in the future, that is the week spanning from the 17th till the 24th of May, 2013. And the General Assembly, henceforth referred to as the GA, is what this video is all about. I didn't get too much good footage, so this will mostly be me talking and cutting it in with the clips and pictures I did get. So this is John, Esther and I outside the church offices at 121 George Street in Edinburgh. This is the assembly halls from outside. And this is most of the youth reps with the moderator, who is basically the formal leader of the church for the year, and the person that keeps everyone in line during debates. The General Assembly is the highest court of the Church of Scotland, and meets for a week every year to decide on the general decisions, both big and small, for the church at large. The Church of Scotland is a Presbyterian church, which works in a hierarchical, council-based structure. I was, at the general, uh, I was at the GA as a youth representative for the Presbytery of Buchan, and had several friends going as youth reps for their own presbyteries or for the National Youth Assembly, a similar but smaller scale event for young people between the ages of 16 and 25 involved with the Church of Scotland. This year's assembly began on the 17th of May, when most of the youth reps and first-time commissioners travelled to Edinburgh for an evening session which explained how the assembly works. As I had been a youth rep the previous year, I was among the 10 out of 36 youth reps able to help the first time as amongst ourselves in understanding what was happening. Unfortunately, I rather undermined my own credibility by waiting around in the wrong hotel for three hours. How was I supposed to know that it was, we were staying in a different hotel than last year when it was just round the corner? On the next day, the assembly began properly. The new moderator, the Right Reverend Lorna Hood, was inducted, and the previous moderator, the very Reverend Albert Bogle, retired from the position. We then began our deliberations for the week, with the reports of a few smaller committees and the Scottish Bible Society, which does a lot of good work involving giving Bibles to those who want them but would otherwise be unable to get them, in places such as China and Africa. Each night, the youth reps would do a prep session on the topics for the, of the debates for the next day or the next few days. This always leads to us youth reps being among the most well-spoken and well-prepared representatives at the assembly, even if we can't vote in debates ourselves. After the prep session we would have a small worship led by various members of the staff team that kept us organised. If you guys are watching, we love you. On the Sunday there were no sessions, but there was a service at St Giles Cathedral, which I will tell you about in this next clip. So, just been at a service at St Giles Cathedral. There's a few pros and cons for it. It was, kind of, it was a good sermon by the moderator. There was really good acoustics in the cathedral, but I wasn't fussed. It was a lot quite long-winded and there was, it was quite pompous and there was a lot of bits during it where the, the, the order of service thing was saying it was sort of implying that everyone was trying to but it was just the choir so uh, just meh after the St Giles service there was a large event in Princess Street Gardens which ran between 1 and 6 in the evening it featured performances by several Christian bands along with on behalf of the Mission and Discipleship Council, the Church of Scotland Youth Communities, Cozy for short, choir. So many tents for most of the councils of the church, as well as other organisations and specific congregations. In particular, I ended up handing out flags outside the Mission and Discipleship Council's tent for about half an hour, and quite significantly, I managed to give out more of the flags than the guys who were doing it officially at the same time as I was. So, near the end of the event was a large service in which I carried my presbytery's banner or flag thing in for. Unfortunately, I got no footage of this. During this service, several doves were released to musical accompaniment, like so. How great is our God. On Monday, 
was the big high-profile debate for the year, as in 2011, the GA had deliberated to come to a decision on the subject of same-sex relationships in the ministry in 2013. This issue is quite a polarising one in church circles, as a lot of people have a lot of strong opinions on the subject of homosexuality. The commission that had been tasked with coming up with the decisions on this presented two possibilities. Continue on the path of allowing ministers in same-sex relationships and civil partnerships with an opt-out clause for those churches that disapprove, or revert to strictly condemning it. In addition, two ex-moderators put forward other options, one of which affirmed homosexual ministers entirely and did not allow an opt-out clause like the first possibility, and the second which affirmed the church's traditional position but allows an opt-out clause for those churches that didn't mind or wanted a minister in a same-sex relationship or civil partnership. The first extra option was withdrawn by its suggester immediately after he spoke to it, and I remain convinced that he did so in order to have people vote for the first option. Despite what you might expect, the GA was very gracious in its deliberation, and no one fought at all, despite the differing opinions. In fact, several of my other youth rep friends heard commissioners, visitors, and stewards complaining in the bathrooms that they were only there to see a fight. The decision came down to a vote between the three remaining options, and the two motions with the opt-out clauses won out over the reverting motion. These two options were then voted on, with the final option of affirming the church's traditional position, but allowing the opt-out clause winning. And to be quite honest, I'm quite glad it did, as any of the other motions would most likely have caused a schism in the church, which wouldn't have been good at all. The next day's debates were far different. They were from some of the largest councils of the church, the World Mission Council, the Social Care Council, and the Mission and Discipleship Council. The, mission, the World Mission Council is responsible for working with Christians in other countries and spreading Christianity to those in other countries that wish to be involved in it. They've, as a result, been quite involved in helping those affected by HIV and it was on this year's issue that I decided to speak for the first time in any assembly debate by commending the World Mission Council's efforts against the spread of HIV. As you'll see in this recreation with my friend Maddie. She's cool. Go subscribe to her. As I forgot to get someone to record it while it was happening. Section number 15. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Hyman? James Hyman, 833. I may be here as a predatory youth rep this year, but I've also been involved in the National Youth Assembly in recent years. I would like to commend the World Mission Council's HIV programme, in particular for working in partnership with other organisations such as the NYA. We all really appreciated Marjorie coming to speak to us about the programme and pointing us to a worthwhile project for support, in particular through our fundraising, managing to raise £1,500. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Hyman. Number 15? After I did that in real life, I had a little bit of an adrenaline crash and started getting the shakes. To be fair, it's not easy to address over 800 people, plus however many people were watching on the live webcast, but I didn't do too badly for a first attempt at it. The Social Care Council is the mild-mannered alter ego of the vigilante care organisation known as Crossreach. Okay, maybe they're not actually a vigilante organisation, but they are one of the largest providers of social care in Scotland. Their only downside being that they do so much good work on that front that they have financial problems, being the only church employment agency that doesn't pay its employees the living wage that it's meant to, as it can't afford to. The Mission and Discipleship Council is involved in getting people involved with the church, both in the context of leading willing people to Christianity and enabling Christians to be involved with the church's activities. For example, the NYA, the National Youth Assembly, comes under the M&D Council's jurisdiction, as does much of the church's work with young people. Another organisation whose report was read on Tuesday was the Church of Scotland Guild. The Guild, originally the Women's Guild, is an organisation that was created in the 1800s to organise women in the life of the church, but about 30 years ago changed its constitution to allow men in as well. The youth of the church is always very supportive of the Guild, as, among other things, they helped set up the NYA, the National Youth Assembly, financially. Wednesday's reports were largely not terribly important, aside from the NYA report by the inestimable Ewan Patterson, this year's NYA moderator, and the Ministries Council, who are in charge of ministers and deacons, and what happens to and with them. But that last one was fairly boring, truth be told. In our prep session for it, I almost fell asleep a few times. Our post-prep worship on Wednesday was very good, though, as it involved special unpoppable bubbles that I still have. I mean, look at them. Lovely. Thursday's major debate was the Church and Society Council debate. The Church and Society Council deals with how the Church interacts with the rest of society. The Council had come under some fire for a report called The Inheritance of Abraham about the state of Israel this year, but I missed that section of the debate, as I had to leave early for that day 
to re prepare for some receptions that the youth representatives have to go to. You see, the GA has the Queen, or the Queen's duly appointed representative, the Lord High Commissioner, observing us. Both the years I've been to the GA, the Lord High Commissioner has been Lord James Douglas Hamilton, Baron Selkirk of Douglas. And each year in Holyrood Palace, the Lord High Commissioner hosts a reception on the last night of the Assembly. However, before that, the youth reps host a reception ourselves for the moderator. We set the moderator a challenge to place three words of our choosing into their closing speech of the Assembly. This year, our words were discombobulate, mackerel, and hairspray. And last year, we set the moderator of the time jelly babies, mollycoddle, and wisdomizing, a word coined by the NYA moderator of the year, Amanda. I have to say that this year's moderator did very well in incorporating our words into her closing speech, but more on that later. After our reception, we went up to Hollywood Palace for the Lord High Commissioner's reception. And all the first term commissioners, youth reps, and many esteemed guests, such as former moderators, were there, and they had magic refilling glasses of wine. I personally just had water. At the end of the reception was a ceremony called the Beating of the Retreat where the palace stewards basically push everyone out of the particular room that the reception was held in. After this, the youth was run for dinner at a restaurant called Biblos, where I felt kind of down for whatever reason, which was not helped by my being ridiculously tired and ending up going to bed early afterwards. On the last day of the assembly, the reports were mostly by various trustees and finished in the morning. After lunch, the closing ceremony began. Much of it was very slow, but the moderator doing her address did very well in fitting in our three words for her at which point we all cheered. And that is all from GA. I did have a clip from you in the NYA moderator saying about how he felt the GA went, but the audio is not great as we were walking and it was windy. So instead, Esther, Mike, how do you feel the assembly went? Wonderful! It's all right. And me? I thought it was fantastic. See ya. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13